Welcome to Tax Insights, presented by Hawkins Ash CPAs. Good morning, listeners. Welcome back to Tax Insight here on WOMT every week with Jeff from Hawkins Ash. Jeff, good morning, sir. Good morning, Terry. Today we are talking about making charitable donations. We are. Because with the increase in the standard deduction, you know, it's more difficult for people to take advantage of their itemized deductions. Now, there's talk in Washington about making that a little bit easier by allowing a higher amount of state and local taxes to be deducted. But it's still hard for, you know, just the regular, you know, person like ourselves to be able to itemize. So today I want to talk about making charitable contributions and getting a tax deduction for it, whether you itemize or not. Now, I know for many people, giving to charity is more important than the deduction, but hey, if you can get the tax benefit, why not? Absolutely. So let's go back and talk quick about the standard deduction. Back in 2018, the standard deduction was increased for most people by almost double. So for 2021, the standard deduction is $25,100 for a married couple and $12,550 for a single individual. Now, that amount is made up of things like your medical expenses, state and local taxes, um, mortgage interest, and then also what we're going to talk about today, which is charitable contributions. So what can people do to get a deduction if they don't itemize? So there's a couple things that, that you can do. First of all, for this year, you can get a tax deduction as long as you make $600 of donations for a married couple or $300 for a single individual. Now, these must be cash donations, not donations to Goodwill. And like I said, you get the donation, whether you itemize or not, as long as you make them by December 31st. Now, if you're over the age of 70 and a half, you can actually do even more. So I've heard about that. Older individuals can make donations from the IRAs, correct? Yeah, it's it's called a Qualified Charitable Distribution, or a QCD. So if you're age 70 and a half or older, you're eligible to make these kind of donations. Now, there are certain rules that need to be followed. You can't take a distribution and use these funds to make a donation. The funds must come directly from your IRA and go directly to your charity. So like I said, you can't take a a distribution from your IRA and then use those same funds to make the donation. It has to come directly from your IRA to the charity. And those must be made by December 31st. Now, for those that are really charitable inclined, you can make a donation of up to $100,000 per year by using this method, and that's per spouse. And the other nice thing is, you know, with minimum required distributions coming back this year, any donations made through this qualified distribution or qualified charitable distribution count towards those required minimums that they have to make. So here's really how it works. What you do is you have your IRA custodian transfer whatever you want to do um, and send that right over to the charity. Then when it comes to filing your taxes, you're not going to get a donation um, for making that charitable contribution, but you also don't need to pick up that IRA income on your return. So at the end of the day, it does lower your income just as if you were to itemize. So we also talked in the past about setting up Uh, Your own charity, like on your own, how does that work? This works really well. You know, for wealthy people, they can set up a family foundation and make a donation to it. Now, the deduction is limited, but this is a good option for those individuals who want to, you know, put a bunch of money into a charity and they have full control over it. For a lot of other people, you know, you can do what's called a donor advised funds, which I like in a lot of situations. These type of funds allow you to make a charitable contribution this year and then give it to a charity in a future year. Now, you still get the deduction this year because you've actually made the donation to this fund. And then you, and then you can make, you know, you can actually give it to the charity in future years. This is normally set up by an investment company. So for both of these options, you can make larger gifts this year and that'll allow a person to use their itemized deductions And, uh, but what I would suggest is, you know, make those larger deductions in the first year, then, you know, use the standard deduction. And then in future years, take the standard deduction while you're kind of using up the funds that you put into these other accounts. 
it's a lot more tax efficient that way than giving small donations every single year. Jeff, a lot of great information. Time is running out here in today's program. A lot of stuff for people to sit down and talk to you guys about how or what is the best way of connecting with the team at Hawkins Ash? I would go right to our website, which is hawkinsash.cpa. And we'll talk to you next week on WMT. This has been Tax Insights, presented by Hawkins Ash CPAs. Learn more online at hawkinsashcpas.com. Hawkins Ash CPAs, part of your business, part of your life.